Thank you to Evan for that lovely introduction and that great talk. I think that set the stage very well. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Francis, and I, uh, I work for Netlify. I'm head of UX and product design. So yes, my boss is on this panel. Um, I'd love to let the panel introduce themselves briefly. So maybe going from the furthest back towards me. Okay. I'm Kyle Matthews, uh, founder of Gatsby. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Short and sweet. I am uh, Matt Billman. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Netlify. And if you don't know it, Netlify is a platform that web developers use to build and publish websites and web applications. And I'm Simon, and I'm a co-founder of uh, Sanity.io, and uh, I'm functioning as the CTO. W wonderful. Thank you very much. So I think the obvious place to start is, did you all agree with Evan's overview there? Do you <laughs> think the time is now? You know, what was your motivations for getting to this point? Why, why are we seeing you today? Um, what, what, what maybe inspired you to begin your companies, or what were the challenges you were seeing um, that made you find, find your, found your company, should I say? Um, and I, I know Matt has an answer for this, so I might hop over to him first. Just why you all have a little think. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, my the the idea behind Netlify was really starting to see not 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 necessarily the splitting of of content from presentation as such. Like I've been working in that space before Netlify for for a long time, but more the the decoupling of sort of the whole presentation front end layer from from the back end layer and the way the back end started splitting from like some big monolithic application into lots of different mm -hmm. services. Amongst those, all the specific headless CMSs and content infrastructures that became a part, right? And we, we started seeing that architectural shift happening for the web and also started seeing that that would require sort of new workflows, new platforms to, to support developers working with it effectively and to be able to glue together all these different components in, in new ways. And that was sort of the inspiration originally for, for, for starting Netlify and, and building a platform in that space. Uh, has anyone thought of an answer yet? Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, Gatsby is a React-based uh, website framework. Um, and uh, I've done web stuff since mid-2000s, did a lot of Drupal, worked at Pantheon, which I have a bit member. And uh, uh, they did a lot of like, kind of developer tooling for Drupal, WordPress, and, like slash hosting. Uh, so anyways, I'm very familiar with just like how people build websites and you know, build, a lot my own, build a lot myself, you know, built tools to support people building websites, et cetera, et cetera. And it just was really fascinating, you know, kind of watching cloud computing and then kind of like the JavaScript frameworks, tooling, et cetera, revolutions happen. And uh, yeah, and just like, you know, the CMS world was kind of, uh, 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 you know, built on early, uh, earlier assumptions. It wasn't kind of keeping up. And I just saw a way to kind of take all these things, combine them, and make uh, web development a lot more efficient and websites a lot faster. And uh, so that's kind of where Gatsby Open Source came from. And so now Gatsby, if you don't know, is a, is a company. Um, we started that, um, my co-founder and I started that a couple years ago. And our goal now is to continue to kind of drive, you know, improvements to developer experience, to the speed of sites, um, but also kind of build tooling to help uh, teams of developers, you know, build sites together. Yeah, for us it was kind of initially uh, anger. Like we, hmm. we. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's anger. a good reason. <laughs> yeah. So we <laughs> we had been. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like <laughs> a spite and anger. That's the <laughs> yeah. motivator. No, yeah. but we we had been working as consultants for a long time, and uh, for like almost a decade, we hadn't needed any mm -hmm. like advanced CMSs at all because we were using uh, we we were working with the social media and user like engagement things and. It was about structured uh, content in terms of microservices and business logic that we had then. We had built like a number of uh, systems for that, and we reused them over and over again in different presentations. And then we got the, we were contacted by this huge architecture agency that we are like really fans of, like personally fans of. So we usually wouldn't accept a job like that because it was too like, content oriented. But for this time, like let's do, we'll do one. Maybe mm -hmm. even get to meet this architect. Uh, <laughs> and that, that was the real reason. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it actually, was. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're honest about that. But then uh, we, we had just assumed that like content management had just chugged along nicely those de that decade, where well, we mm -hmm. didn't look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we so we sold the job, and we said like we will do like books and uh, your website and business development tools all from the same source, and we'll be fine. We'll you, you'll just do that work. We'll do like make a pure nice uh, database uh, of your work. And then we realized that product didn't exist. I was like, 
oh no, we have to make a CMS. Like, that's, <laughs> like the, that's the main, that's the, that's the biggest mistake. It's a ring of hell for that, mistake. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then we, we did. Uh, because we needed this, uh, <laughs> we needed it. We needed. It. We wouldn't want to mess up our nice microservices with this kind of uh, terrible uh, CMSs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, uh, that's it wasn't there, so we made it. Excellent. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Evan alluded to this, but he 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 suggested that there was a certain kind of site that was particularly suitable for this. So, is there a limitation to this style of decoupled architecture that maybe means we won't see traction throughout? Or parts of the web, like maybe the e-commerce sites, don't work in this way. Um, is there a limit? Do you think it's w will we own, will we ever see it go beyond sort of the the very purely content sites? Oh, I think that's not the case at all. Like for us, it was uh, first everything else mm -hmm. because it's all about like decoupling these different like uh, first it's just you decouple your own stuff because it scales better and you can mm -hmm. you can better better deploy it and and it, and it kind of uh, maintain the software better. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you realize that some of these parts, I don't need to make them. Mm -hmm. I'll replace them with someone else's stuff that's better. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, you realize that uh, content is terrible and you need to make the piece for that. <laughs> but then now that exists. But then we, of course, only want to work like Sanity is, makes sense for content sites. But then if you're Amazon, maybe you want to use Sanity for some of the content mm -hmm. that's around that, mm -hmm. but not for the shopping experience, of mm -hmm. course. That's some other, but someone else are making that. Mm -hmm. So you see it as, as, a, as a patchwork of different components. It's an assembly, right? Yeah, yeah. assembly. Yeah. Does, that, does that resonate with uh, Gatsby's story and Netlify's? Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, one, one of the, that was one of the like, key insights that um, I had that you know, made me realize that there was a kind of a place for mm -hmm. Gatsby. Is that I mean, if you think about like problems in general. Problems either have solutions that like all the solutions converge on the same thing, or the the solutions diverge. And you know, if you look at building websites, there's kind of backend components and there's like frontend components and whatever. And backend components, like you're saying, there's like gazillion different types of data and the way you manage data and store data and serve data, et cetera, et cetera. There's like no way that we're ever going to converge on the same, you know, thing. Like Sanity can do like. 96% of you know websites, but there's still 4% that need wildly different characteristics, and it's not going to work. So yeah, so it's like, so there's just kind of like logically going to be lots of backend components, and so. But on the front end, on the other hand, almost all websites kind of need the same thing with like developer tools and you know design stuff. And like, anyway, so it's basically components and a way to build it and a way to serve it. Um, and so that's why Gatsby's designed the way it is, where you know you have the front end stuff, but then it has just like a plugin system to like plug in any kind of backend data source that you want. Anything that has an API, you know, will fit in. And so people building Gatsby sites, you know, routinely hook up to multiple uh, data sources, and nobody really knows the difference. Mm -hmm. so I think I think like Simon had a great point there, right? Like when when you talked about Amazon maybe using like Sanity for part of the content and something else for the for the e-commerce, right? Like I think one of the things we we've seen with this decoupling of the front end and the back end and the back end splitting into many services is that we get sp smaller, more specialized services in some way and, and more of them, right? Like, so, so if we think in the, in the terms before this happened, you would have like monolithic frameworks like WordPress or Drupal, and you would have different ones for e-commerce, right? You would have like Magnolia for really big e-commerce sites or things like that, or, or like you, you would have a whole, whole spectrum of different tools for different kind of sites and so on, because in the end, once you pick that tool, everything was inside that, right? So once you used WordPress, you had a plugin ecosystem that was that plugin ecosystem, but you couldn't like mix and match with others, right? And what we're starting to see with this sort of APIification, right, is that you start having all these different tools that then in themselves can become much more like reusable in a certain way, right? When you start saying, okay, instead of having like, in instead of my CMS determining like essentially how's my view layer going to look like and can I do this kind of shopping cart and uh, like what's my options in the payments ecosystem or the search ecosystem going to look like but just being like the CMS determines like how are you going to 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 manage content right like and you you start having separate services for search and several services for payments and maybe separate e-commerce APIs for having inventory and ordering and all of that right that means that each of those services can become generally more reusable, like reusable for, for a larger amount of, of, of different projects because you now sort of take away all the re residual constraints where picking one tool would determine your whole tool set, right? And that was what, what we saw. Like I've, before I was doing this, I was working on, on a more traditional cloud-hosted CMS that, that 
that had a very strict separation of continent design, right? But picking that CMS would still limit you to a specific template language and a specific way to work with the front end, right? And I started seeing like the world of front end tooling becoming incredibly, in, incredibly fragmented and fast changing, right? Like React and Angular and Vue and Swelter and all of these tools are like, like in a very rapid rev like evolution and, and being constrained by like how you wanted your content to be to also constraining like how do you want your whole view layer to be and your presentation layer to be started becoming like really like I could see that like that that would fall apart right and I think it's what we're seeing with with a lot of the traditional CMS platforms that that are even starting to to venture toward the decoupled approach right um, but that we see more purely in systems like sanity that you're really seeing that okay if you can take that API layer and 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 make something more focused on on the content experience then it becomes more generable, generably usable for, for any time you have that type of content experience and you're not li no longer setting arbitrary limits of what you can otherwise do. Mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense. But So this all sounds quite rosy. I think you, you, you <laughs> have a good picture of how this is going to work. But So wh where do you think you foresee there being problems? Do you hear any critiques from customers, clients coming in, working in this way? Do, that, do you have authors who are frustrated with the decoupled nature uh, where they may be used to something more integrated, like your your common WordPress user, which is a huge part of the web still. Um, do you do you ever hear any negatives? Do you feel there's anything missing from the we stack? So we first saw a lot of pushback from editors in okay. this way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised about the lack of that. Yeah. Because I think to many editors it makes sense. You can remove a lot of cruft and unnecessarily like uh, there, there's a lot of leaky abstractions that mm -hmm. you have to pick colors and you know, so so they are kind of grateful to just get to focus on whatever is uh, ma makes sense to them uh, but i do think that developers are we promise them like this very very convenient turnkey solution mm -hmm. and and we each of us have one uh, and then and then uh, together we make like a thing with like three pieces Mm -hmm. And then you add another piece, mm -hmm. and then you add another piece, and then, and then you start with this kind of insane uh, convenience mm -hmm. that, just like, someone mentioned on the first Jamstack conference, like we need this kind of detective crazy wall to just keep track of all the things we are. Right, right. <laughs> Understanding what you need in your stack is yeah. complex because you, mm -hmm. you, like you say, you're pulling from the shelves a few parts, but maybe you don't know how to join them together. Yeah, or even if you do, mm -hmm. if you know, you might have forgotten how That's you right. did. Yeah. 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 So uh, it sounds like maintenance of that stack could become quite tricky as teams change over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't have the tools to do kind yeah. of deployment of them yet. And mm -hmm. there is lots of immaturity there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does it, anyone else have any thoughts on that? I mean, it's abso it, it's something <laughs> we're working on. I can say, right? Like I'm just I didn't mean to make that a leading <laughs> question. Building, <laughs> it wasn't intended. Building but more <laughs> blue layer because, and, and we're working on it because we see that it, it becomes a problem, right? Like once you, like every time you have an, an sort of an unbundling of things, you start wondering, like, hey, what, like, so how do we bundle them together again, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it just inherently happens, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so of course that that happens in in many different aspects of this, right? It happens like once you take all these different services that are available of APIs and so on and build with those, and suddenly you're like, okay, but yeah, yeah. now I need to plug everything together manually, right. right? So we start having having tools that makes that easier. It starts when when we say, okay, now we have this even more like concise. Um, like separation between the content layer and the view layer and suddenly like we, we we do see in the market like marketeers being yeah but how do i like easily drag thing around mm -hmm. and see immediately how it will look like t when 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 i publish right and we start seeing new abstractions layers built to 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 solve that right yeah. so yeah like they said um <laughs> yeah because like you go, <laughs> I mean, all, exactly. yeah, all technologies start like monoliths because you know just getting something to work is the hardest yeah. part of the problem like yeah it actually works that's amazing no one else can figure out how to get it to work <laughs> and so everything starts as monoliths and then like it, you know gets well understood and it breaks apart into smaller pieces and then all the like early adopters are like yay cool now i'm not stuck with the limitations of the monolith i can build whatever i want but then everyone else is like i'm really jealous i want to do that too but i have no idea how to like put together pieces and then somebody comes along and creates new bundles of, uh, so if you look at like it's like mainframes to like the 70s, you know, you could buy off, you know, all the uh, what they call themselves, all the clubs, the homebrew clubs or whatever. You know, they're like, we can build our own computers for like a thousand bucks. That's amazing. Um, and then like Apple and you know IBM and all the clones and Dell and et cetera, et cetera, kind of rebundled all the like modular little PC pieces into like actual computers and stuff. So anyway, so we're going from like CMSs and like these big kind of like omnibus like 
you know, frameworks like Rails and Django and stuff that just sort of like, boom, here's the whole thing, to, to much smaller, like, managed services and, like, you know, Node is like, you know, small core, small packages, you know, pull stuff together, whatever. Like, it's interesting that Node's never gotten to, like, a Rails, because everyone wanted Rails, whatever number that is. I mean, there's still a lot of them, of course. They just go to Rails, and Node, and Node computer is like, whatever. You know, like, we're, we're <laughs> not ever going to go there. Um, <laughs> but anyways, and so, so the same thing's happening, yeah. So, like, CMS is to, you know, build your own stuff, and now manage services. And then, like, a lot, a lot of our goal with Gatsby is to kind of productize this, this experience as much as possible. That instead of having to, like, you want to hook up three different, you know, data sources, reading through API docs, you know, trying to figure out, like, understanding rate limiting, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You just have a nice plugin that just drops it in, and, and you're done, you know, basically. And, and we're, we're, you know, we're steadily moving up kind of the abstraction curve. So now we released uh, Gatsby themes recently, which is, like, even higher level abstraction, because you can have a Gatsby theme, which, you know, basically solves for a use case. So you're like, you want a blog, bloop, there's a blog. You want an e-commerce store, bloop. You know, hooks up to Shopify and Sanity and gives you like a full blown mm -hmm. um, e commerce store. And so the next thing is like kind of automatically provisioning this. So, you know, you want to just click a button and like get your stack. And then your stack is, you know, you can even, and these things will be named. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if people have like proprietary brand named, you know, whatever stacks that's really just like assembling all this stuff under, under the hood. Um, a lot of people are like talking about like the sassification of the web, where more and more websites are going from like handcrafted by, you know, uh, agencies or, or in-house or whatever to you just like click a button and you have a website, uh, which is kind of the logical extension of all this, that, you know, the web is just a product that you buy. Yeah, I've, I've heard that for like the last, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, <laughs> 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 like more yeah, than I mean, a decade it's a for sure. It's train, but. And, and, yeah. and, and I, actually, I actually haven't really seen that really happen like that that's Facebook. always been the site builders and so on but the thing is that they always end up like the thing is that as soon as you have a real company you typically want someone to actually build you something like more tailored and to actually have like experience in running websites and so on so you quickly start building some kind of capacity of that and i and i actually i actually don't really think that 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 will change i don't see the web designer role going away. You don't see the front end developer role going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But it might might make more people have nice web shops <laughs> that are <laughs> serviceable because I mean they can afford I it. I would say we have more, much more existential threat from the app yeah. stores as well yeah. more than we do yeah. from p the way people build websites. Absolutely. Um, why Absolutely. we perhaps noodle away on building really <laughs> lovely websites. Yeah. The next 1,000 people are coming online. Next 100 million people are coming online on phones, and the phones are largely led by app stores. Um, does this worry you? Are we still going to be relevant in five years? Oh, well, that's a big driver for us, for example, because yeah. uh, lots of people come to us the first time because they realize they have HTML in their mm -hmm. content <laughs> and they need to get rid of it uh, and mm -hmm. they need a way to kind of enforce it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, of course, uh, for us, that's, uh, that's what we imagine more, much more people to do because right. we thought the drive would be much faster towards mm -hmm. uh, apps and set-top boxes and everything. Interesting. Does that terrify you? It terrifies me. <laughs> what? Being uh, app stores, app stores terrify me. Oh yeah, from a kind of political <laughs> point of view. I'm an open like web, I'm an open web <laughs> fan. So as a CTO or something, yeah. it's 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 uh, it, uh, it, uh, it really is exciting to it's me. It's exciting yeah, to you, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see, I can see where you feel about scary that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I think Matt and, and and Carl are much more probably web purists. Um, yeah. So I, uh, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm obviously like I've always been a fan of the web and like been a like fan of it since I first discovered that I could just like hack something together and put it out there and Absolutely. suddenly people could see it right like mm -hmm. which is pretty magical right and and I think as soon as you start introducing these very strict gating mechanisms where you don't just like put up a URL somewhere but you sort of apply for being able to to mm -hmm. get your product to someone else through a, a gatekeeper or a company that's that that that's fine for specific like markets yeah, and definitely. so on, right? But but I do think it's really important that we keep a really strong um, open web. Um, and I do think there's a lot of like there's always been a lot of threats to that. I'm I'm also always pretty optimistic that the web has always overcome them. Um, but I I do see things like um, for me like Google, like what Google is doing with AMP has some really potentially very scary implications of like gently guiding people to to sort of have to put everything on Google infrastructure in order to show up in Google, mm -hmm. right? And then suddenly 
we'll we'll Gatsby sites are faster than AMP sites. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I mean, well, it's, again, it's but that works yeah. very well it's for sanity's model, but not so much for yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's not even so much like I mean, the packaged format and so on fits well well into like a, a, a build it and ship it and so on, right? Like, but but it's more a question of like, do we get to a point where 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 someone like Google becomes able to take a certain position as a gatekeeper that they really shouldn't have, right? Like that they've always had <laughs> in some ways from, from just the search monopoly and being able to like decide if you can get like discovered or not, right? But if they, it, but, but if it e even starts becoming like a point where you, where you almost have to like Computer publish onto them, again. right? Like mm -hmm. then, then, then it starts getting to another level of scary. Yeah, and I think we'll lose some of the magic of the web when that yeah. happens too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe maybe we'll not talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's 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 flip it around. Let's see some positive stories. What what <laughs> wins are you seeing with your clients when you move to working this way? Are, are, are you told me about the architecture site, which sounded uh, particularly fantastic. Yeah. But you know what's what's working well for for clients customers? Um, are they seeing performance benefits? Are they seeing other benefits? So I think like a surprising win for me is seems to be like. P the companies are moving towards insourcing a lot. Mm -hmm. they, they realize that their kind of digital assets are <laughs> core things that they mm -hmm. need to have in-house. Uh, they will use the need to use pure people to do more things. Uh, so that kind of happened th th uh, at the same time as this. And we can kind of provide, like, very often that's a very easy sell. Like, we can, you can have just JavaScript engineers uh, to do both mm -hmm. your CMS uh, customization and also everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can take away everything about ops and database management and all that. It just goes away. And then they just go, oh, thank you. Where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> you just saved me yeah. hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, we, what, what we keep hearing is, uh, is is a story about developer productivity, right? Like when we, especially when we talk to larger clients, right? Like we, we've heard many say the word like 10xing the, our developers' productivity, basically, right? Like just from, 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 from the whole benefit of the stack, right? Like partly because we, like because Netlify will take all of the automation away, right? But also because like once you sort of have these constraints around like backend and front end, you you start being able to have like small product team being able to, to, to drive the whole development and the whole life cycle of a project, right? And that, and that gives them a freedom to, to move faster than they've been able to, to do before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, I think, I think uh, kind of like what they were saying is that, yeah, there's kind of this like law of conservation of complexity or something. <laughs> it sounds like a thing. Yeah, that's cool. It's yeah, it sounds really cool. But anyways, it's like, you, you know, there's like n, n number of, you know, units of complexity in building any site. And the cool thing about, this move to manage CMSs, to static sites, uh, just like you, when you have no running server, I mean, well, yeah. no services that you're running. <laughs> yeah. um, all of a sudden, that complexity that was like kind of contained in those are now yeah. pu you know, pushed off to a team yeah. that's like extremely good at it, and that's all they do. And so all of a sudden, your complexity just kind of like drops in half or whatever. Yeah. And then you know, with Gatsby, we, we, we put a lot of focus on uh, you know, creating really fast sites for people automatically. Like we, I, I like to say that you know, a lot of other frameworks, you have to work hard to make your site fast. Like, there's so many foot guns on the web to, mm -hmm. to kind of kill your web performance, your site's performance. But with Gatsby, we try as much as possible to, like, you know, kind of control how your site is built so that, you know, it's as fast as possible. And people tweet, like, constantly, like, 10 times a day, like, their Lighthouse score is like, wow, my Gatsby site, like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but, you know, it's like 100, 100, 100, whatever. Um, <laughs> And so it's like we kind of like take away a big part of the complexity of building a great site, which is performance, by you know kind of controlling that and abstracting that away from them and so forth. And so yeah, so I mean I, I think a lot of people's experience is just you know how simple this is compared to what they've done in the past, which means that they can move a lot faster and deliver like way better sites. Like mm -hmm. we we hear from a lot of kind of like WordPress Drupal agencies that you know they're shipping sites twice as fast as they used to. They're like bidding less than they used to and making more money <laughs> than they used to and their clients are like way happier with the you know with the uh the outcomes than they were before so um yeah there's a lot of uh you know there's a lot of uh uh things left to do to kind of like help this go mainstream but um yeah early early results are mm -hmm. very positive what are those things that make us go mainstream what it, what's the what's what are we missing uh, I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I think a lot has to do with this kind of uh easy interface in terms mm -hmm. of patching things together mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. discovering things and 
I was uh, found myself today talking about like we need some kind of RDF to describe how things fit together. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, Please RDF no. is Please no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that will really. Uh, uh, of course, everyone is scrambling to be the ones uh, doing right. that, and then of course everyone else is afraid that those who do it will be the gatekeepers. So we will kind of. I think we will be, and I think that's a, a, also a bit of a scary part here is that um, we have to invent a lot of things. To mm -hmm. solve these things and to go mainstream, and for example, we needed uh, a query language that was at the abstraction level of SQL, mm -hmm. uh, not a, an API pattern like GraphQL. So we had to invent that, and then we get some flack for like making that be a, like vendor, vendor, yes, vendor lock-in yes, yes, play, yeah. which is isn't. So we just made mm -hmm. sure to open source it, but of course uh, nobody else is running it right now. So still, it's kind so of so it just work. looks that way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, so then making sure people don't have this kind of platform angst when they pick the services and being able to, to assemble mm -hmm. it easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, first, I would say I think we're already seeing this go mainstream, right? Like just from our <laughs> yeah, list point. of yes, enterprise so clients, <laughs> we're seeing like large <laughs> grocery companies yeah. or oil companies or whatever like that, that are normally not like super early adopters adopting these kind of technologies, right? So it's just, but I do also think that there are steps like architecturally that we still haven't really seen yet. Um, I think for example, you mentioned RDF, right? And I still think it, it still feels to me that there's something that that this category starts to allow for that we haven't really seen happening, right? Like once you really start decoupling the front end and the back end, and you have these different APIs and the content becomes like separated, it it starts seeming like it starts seeing seeming like some fairly weird like architectural anti pattern that we have all these like bots and crawlers going to URLs, taking like big chunks <laughs> of presentational HTML mm -hmm. and scouring through them from meta tags that indicates things like what's the content here, right? Like where, where, where at the same time we're building all of these abstractions to really have clean APIs for the content and for like for the functionalities and so on, right? So it still feels like we're, we're at a stage where where at some point it would be logical to start seeing some ways for, for, for crawlers and bots and indexers and so on to sort of also be aware of this separation of, of content and design and start saying, okay, I can actually just look at the, at, at, at the content and figure out what it is and where it comes from mm -hmm. and so on, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and stop like, like trying to fiddle with uh, generated like huge <laughs> HTML blocks just to figure out what's, what's the actual content in it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. My short list would be, I guess people are mainstream anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is, uh, yeah, kind of like we've been alluding to that, you know, now it's like this world is like a, you have like a shelf of parts and you're like, ooh, look at this and this and this and look what I built, a monstrosity. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, so like people really want, you know, like a nice radio or something and you plug it in, you go on, you're like, yay, it plays music. Um, that sort of thing. And so, yeah, so we're, we're working on that. We have, uh, th th this came out like a couple of weeks ago. You can click a button and, you know, it starts a blog or e-commerce store or whatever. Um, we, we have a few different starters with, uh, fortunately, not quite yet with Sanity. We're <laughs> well, we need OAuth. <gasps> but you oh guys yeah. released that, right? Yeah, we, yeah, we, we haven't yeah. yeah, oh right, pulled anyone yet. Stop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. We'll, we'll get fight, this done later. Fight, fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, so <laughs> you, you can start a site with Contentful <laughs> and, and Data CMS, and Sanity's coming soon. Um, so that's one thing. Is like people just want like stacks or packages or recipes or products, basically, where you're like, I need this kind of site and whatever. Um, and that also eventually leads to kind of like some sort of marketplace thing where you can like sell these things and buy those things or whatever. Uh, another thing is just like people like CMSs. CMS is a very nice product and it's been around for a while and it's very successful. And so you know, like you ask, what does a CMS do? And you catalog those and then you compare them to what like this kind of world is capable of. And there's some missing pieces. Um, one of them is like preview. Like every CMS, you you have a little preview button, and then it opens up like, hey, this is what your site's going to look like before you publish it. And it's very handy if you're, you know, a content editor, or marketer, or whatever, because you can see what your site's going to look like before you, you just kind of save it, um, screw everything up if you do it wrong. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's, it's nerve-wracking apparently uh, in some. I mean, if it's like a high-profile site. Anyway, so so when you have this decoupling, then all of a sudden, you know, you don't see. Uh, it's harder to kind of see those things. And so that's why we came out with something called Gatsby Preview, where um, uh, you know, you're, you're making changes, and then you can kind of see those changes reflected in like an actual staging version of your mm -hmm. site in kind of near real time. Um, with Sanity, it's especially cool. I encourage you to see a demo, because you can like type, because Sanity is like back in the streaming API. Is really 
Yeah, actually, nice. that's, that's like that yeah. example is actually one of our main uh, drivers yeah. of users. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's uh, really awesome amazing. Kind of real like, time preview. Uh, like I was like, <laughs> like the first time I saw just that. Just hug, <laughs> just hug already. You know, because you're <laughs> like, okay. you're like typing away, and it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, it's, it's very weird and very cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so like those kind of workflows are because like if you're if you're building a site, you know, like yeah, we're all developers, like we can like build all this stuff, but then and you know, who actually runs the site? It's not developers, generally speaking. So, so like, how do, how do you enable, like, for the, the, the re re reoccurring theme that we hear from customers at Gatsby Preview is that, hey, it's cool, we, like, built the site, but then, like, we're blocked on, the marketing technologists or other people are, like, we're blocked on making changes unless we get a front-end front -end engineer involved. And then with Preview, they're not blocked anymore because they can understand the implications of what they're doing mm -hmm. um, really easily. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's definitely been, uh, speaking for Matt, that's definitely been a theme for us too, is yeah. the power yeah. of letting people see their content yeah. in situ is, is yeah. really important because content yeah. doesn't exist in a vacuum. No. It, it only exists when it's published, really, yeah. to the end user. Yeah. So yeah. it does feel like an important part. Yeah. Um, yeah. We are coming up to the end of our, of our little chat. Would anybody like to ask a question? I can't really see. <laughs> 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 so you'll have to wave <laughs> if you have a question. Someone's running for a microphone, I think. <laughs> but I, uh, oh, you're all very quiet out there. <laughs> really? No opinions? No records? Perfect coverage. <laughs> well, they don't have any questions for you. Do you want to say something scandalous so they can? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually against preview. You're against I preview? Oh, tell me more. <laughs> oh, actually, yes, this is fantastic. <laughs> tell me more. Yeah. Please tell me more. No, I think it's very problematic because, mm. uh, <laughs> So I love the, I, I don't, and I'm, of course I, I'm exaggerating, I, I love the Gatsby Preview plugin, it solved a big uh, rhetorical thing for us because people are afraid mm -hmm. to pre press That's publish right. without mm -hmm. seeing it. Mm -hmm. But then of course, uh, uh, for us it's important that you think principled about your yeah. content because you're going to yeah. be consumed by voice APIs, mm -hmm. by blind people, colorblind people, mm -hmm. by yeah. people who are actually just seeing the uh, yeah. kind of condensed search version of your thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, one way to, to do that is to have like a, I, I was actually envisioning some kind of principled preview that would mm -hmm. be more about like what yeah. your content yeah. kind of intends and means. Yeah, interesting. That's, uh, yeah. We think about sometimes we could, maybe you should just randomize the preview. So you press preview and then you get like Surprise. one of the random representations. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so like you, you get to like use the ARIA voice your reader, you're yes. blind now. <laughs> uh, no, so that, that actually like sounds like I a I super interesting project. I, I, it's a really, really great point. Yeah. But also like I've, I've, I think there's even a role, like, I've, I, I ended up, like, in my career building a lot of different commercial CMSs for some reason, right? Like, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that and circle of just like Simon, I've always yeah. regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, anyone that ever builds one will regret it to some extent, <laughs> right? Like, no matter what. But, uh, but one of the things I think, like, that's challenging is that as, as developers, we have this very, like, intuitive understanding of the separation of content and design, right? And we have this understanding of, like, there's a database with things, there's, like, views, and they get mixed, and you see things, right? Mm -hmm. and one of the things you learn when you build these CMSs for, for most normal content editors is that they don't normally, like, they often don't have, like, they haven't sort of been ingrained with that distinction, right? Like, so they just see like things, right? And they don't not, not necessarily correlate that, okay, behind this thing, there's like this content blob in a database and this other thing is a separate content blob, right? So I, I agree that there's a danger that's always been there with these kind of preview systems. Mm. Um, that, that's a challenge as a CMS author, right? Like as a CMS author, you kind of have to figure out how can your CMS both be, be a pleasure to use for these content editors, but how can it also train them in the mental model of separating content and presentation, right? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes you'll fail in that and you'll see really bad examples, right? Like I remember in, in, in the Spanish company we, we worked for, we had to deal a lot with, uh, with multi-language sites and so on, right? Because Europe and Spain even more with like Basque and Catalan and so on, right? Um, and and so I remember this 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 support request coming in of like all my categories in my site has disappeared like from my shop like all of them are gone right and I started looking in through through the logs right and what has happened was that we did have like a live preview mode where you could see the content in context and edit it right and the client had like 
both a Spanish version of the site and the English version. So the client has gone to the English version of the site and meticulously like deleted every category <laughs> one by one because he w didn't want category on the English version, right? <laughs> and, and, and what the client didn't map in, in, in their head was that these categories were the same, right? Like this was like an abstract content system with categories, right? So, so the client just like meticulously spent like an hour deleting all their categories, right? <laughs> and then went to the Spanish side and it's like, they're all gone, <laughs> right? Where did they go? <laughs> and called our support, okay. right? But it's like a typical effect of like, how do you actually train that mental mechanism in, yeah. in, in, in content users of like, yes, you do want to see how it looks like, but you have to also understand that that's not the only way it's going to look like. It's going to show up in all kinds of other places. Mm. And yeah. Okay. So while you've made a good case for maybe <laughs> being careful with previews at the very least. <laughs> we still don't um, get the preview though. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, it's also an yeah. impressive. Uh, yeah. We well do actually, oh. with I, w I would say that like. <laughs> I'm trying, friend. That's why instant pre, I mean, that's why preview is necessary though. Cause like, to, I, I kind of talk about like to engineers on our team, like why, there come, some of them are like, why, why are we doing preview exactly? It, and, and the analogy I use is like, if you're a developer and you write code and then never run it, you're just like, oh, just write code forever and like, Whatever, because it's code is like a very abstract, very concise, very powerful way of expressing ideas, and but if you never run it, it's sort of this. It's it's not live until you kind of see it and whatever. And that's like hot reloading, you know, like it's so powerful um, that that you know you get in React and stuff. Um, anyways, the same thing with like content. It's like ev people keep trying to do in-place editors, and it's always horrible because it's like the the presentation of content is is not the best way to think, of, I mean, anyways, you need that abstraction to have kind of a powerful, concise, elegant way to modify, you know, content. But the way to like bridge the gap is to kind of have hot reloading basically for your mm. content where you're like editing something and immediately updates your site. So. so, or you would have to do test driven content authoring. Mm. That'd be cool too. <laughs> yeah. 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 There you go. That's there a new go. problem to solve. Uh, <laughs> I believe you have yeah. a question in front here. Point. Yeah. It's just the unbundling rebundling story. So, you know, you unbundle to have more flexibility more, be able to handle a more diverse set of requirements. And then early adopters of the unbundled modularized pieces appreciate that and want that and need that. They're like going away from Rails because they're like, Rails has a sprockets thing and like whatever, <laughs> it's like a piece of crap with JavaScript. <laughs> like we need to like control, uh, you know, the modern front end. Like Rails 6 just shipped with Webpack now, so I guess they're caught up again. But anyway, anyways, <laughs> the point is it's like, if you, if you couldn't wait to Rails 6 to actually have modern JavaScript, then you know, you left Rails years ago, um, or at least, you know, decoupled it so that the front end was powered by something else. But um, yeah, but I mean, assuming that what we're doing actually has lasting architectural benefits that, you know, are, are deep and substantive and foundational, then over time, we'll kind of reassemble on top, like the, the kind of smooth sod of, of a, a, you know, smooth, like a finely oiled whatever machine that like most people want to kind of just like get stuff done really quickly. But it's not there yet, but so it's, it's a matter of time. Yeah, no, because I think like we're the first of first, we're like, we've been in a Rails shop for many years and we're still running a, a Rails app uh, now. But I remember when I wanted to leave, not specifically Rails, I still kind of love it, uh, but, uh, but the first time when you kind of need to have your team be kind of, we need to do some refactoring. And then actually we can't touch anything now for two weeks and not fix any bugs or do anything else because now we're changing the templating mm -hmm. system or mm -hmm. something. And the first time you do that and you're like, that, that's, n that's never again. Like the cost, like if your thing is small and neat and fits in like this small ni nice package, it's awesome. And lots of people are doing that and it makes sense for lots of people still to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think that when people wrap their heads around the mental model, I think m lots of people think it's kind of, expensive in terms of like abstractions to move into this but uh, when you're in there it's just as simple as setting up a, way, a, a kind of wordpress site or rail site but then of course if you're used to it it still makes sense but the moment you kind of have some like ambitious project and you pay that cost then you will never go back i think yeah <laughs> too scary you feel unprotected i also think like sometimes we just forget how painful things used to be right like <laughs> i mean uh, like I don't know. Late yesterday, uh, like at the for anyone who was at the Jamstack meetup, right? There was like this this little live coding uh, session of like building in thirty minutes, <laughs> like a, a a full React app in TypeScript for like for like voting on an answer that ended up with like the whole audience voting live and real time updating and so on, right? And just built with a few different tools and deployed in Netlify and connected to Azure and so on, right? And and I'm just thinking, like again, like 
five, <laughs> ten years ago to build something like that, right? <laughs> like it, it would really have been a pre. Like mm -hmm. it wouldn't have happened in like a thirty. It's a weekend project, not a yeah. half an hour. Yeah, yeah. at the very right? least. Yeah. And and yeah. I and I think sometimes we just also like yeah. sometimes it's easy for to to forget how much has actually been made possible mm. already by the, by this mm. kind of technology. Yeah, there's also this tr like common kind of historical trend that just uh, you know as a technological trend is peaking the last kind of examples or whatever of that trend are like the most beautiful the most refined the most elegant whatever and, and they reach that point just before they're superseded and everyone abandons them like <laughs> propeller planes <laughs> in the 50s were just yeah. incredible you know but then jet engines was like and they know nobody flew them anymore so it's just like super nintendo of that era yeah, <laughs> yeah. Something like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like rails is like epitomizes you know what the monoliths can be, yeah. but it's also rapidly being abandoned. You know in the marketplace. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay, we have another question towards the back there. That's a good question. Yeah, I so I, I think I you all heard that. I, I struggle with that when people give advice that because this uh, world is kind of promises this this kind of uh, smorgasbord of ready-made uh, solutions, and then uh, that's often the right solution. Like if you need a CMS, use a CMS, use us, uh, I guess. But then. Uh, uh, if you need uh, to deploy globally, talk to those guys. If you need to <laughs> build, I mean, I mean, like uh, I done everything that Gatsby does by hand, and it, I hated it, and I like, really like that. Do that, and then someone needs something super specific, and they go like, uh, "I will use your service," and uh, they have some, you have some kinds of transactions, and they kind of abuse our service to do that very specific thing. And I'm like, <laughs> "Please, can you sometimes you just need to make it? Like, call a developer yeah. for Christ's sake." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we just don't tell people we can do everything. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we don't tend to tell people what we can't do. We, we tend to tell people what we can do. So, uh, uh, But yeah, I mean, if you ask us, we open about what we you mm. know, are not a good fit for right now. I think so. if there's a specific problem you have, I'm sure they'd be glad to help you fix it over a beer later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I think there's always this tension between like the generic thing machine that all developers inside dream of building, right? mm. like, er, if the first time we just like discover abstraction. Oh, like <laughs> yeah. do everything. Make my program f do everything. Class <laughs> animal. It's, it's a game engine for every kind of game and also newspapers. Typically, it's the first step to watch building a CMS. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Back. So I think it's time to give our lovely panelists a round of applause.